What's up YouTubers, it's time for another episode analyze and review and today we're taking a look at episode 4 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and surprisingly guys, they took a different turn with this episode instead of focusing on a main character like the player maker here instead they're focusing on the side character mainly Go Onizuku this time which is a surprising twist really most of the times when uh, they fo when episodes focus on a s on a side character, they mainly introduce like the main character first and have it slowly turn into the side character's story, which I guess they kind of did with um, episode three really, since half the episodes was on Player Maker and it slowly went into Go Onisuku without us re really knowing really because they didn't do it like right in the face. But throughout this episode, we learned a lot about this character, and we learned a lot about his backstory, dueling style, and how he got to be the king, and what, in what got him the inspiration to become the dueling king of Link Reigns. Which is a surprising, really. The story starts off an orphanarium, which we learn he grew up in. So already we've learned off the bat that this guy is strong. Because growing up in an orphanarium wouldn't be easy. He already had a lot of questions going through his head about his parents. Depending upon the situation, did he get abandoned from his parents at a young age? Did he, um, did something happen to his parents and he got, because of it, he had to go to the orphanarium? There's that many questions probably going through his head and going through our heads at the same time as the viewers and from all that we probably all well what am I saying probably I definitely already like the character knowing up knowing that kind of backstory really because it's so tragic and it makes me want to know more about this character and we can already tell he's got a big heart really because when we see this orphan airing first we see him going in with presents saying he's got gifts for all the orphans which is honestly shocking you don't see that kind of love and return from pe from most people these days really so seeing that with Onizuku going back to the place he grew up in and bring gifts for those orphans which is honestly pretty sweet really and while he's in the orphanarium and with his butler sort of character we learn that He's doing all their stuff for the kids. He's giving them someone to look up to. Someone they can aspire to be to. Aspire, I mean inspire. Oh god. Which is really sweet, really. So we learn his reason for dueling. We learn why he tries to make his duels entertaining. It's for the kids, really. That is his number one priority. Which is really sweet and really heartwarming and honestly it just makes you really look up to this character as a whole just for that and we learned because of that he's determined to become number one he's determined to keep himself strong hence the gym where he trains himself and where we saw him train himself to speed duel he got his own system all set up he's preparing to speed duel and he did a player maker and dive right into the data storm and instantly got blew away. Dedication like that is hard to come from. Especially like within our world where where we want to get like the strongest decks possible so we try to get like all the strong cards as possible. <laughs> but this guy he's determined to do it with his own strength. Hence all the training and all the dedication just for the kids. Heck, even his dueling style is for the kids as well. He's an entertainer duelist. That's how he does a better job than you, yeah, let's face it. <laughs> but as an entertainer, his goal as an entertainer is to first make his opponent look strong so he can turn it around and make himself look strong. Which I gotta admit is selfish and yet has a lot of flaws. Selfish because um, he's making himself look strong, really. He's making his opponent look strong just so he can like tear it down, really. 
So I've got mixed feelings about that really because I really don't like the concept and the idea of that. But um, with the flaws in that really, I'm pretty sure we've all had a moment in Yu-Gi-Oh where um, we've done a misplay or we think we can cope with so low cards and our player goes big, we say we can turn it around easily and then it fails on us. I definitely know I've had a lot of misplays in my time where it can turn around a game if I've done it right, but no, I did misplays and failed on me. But, um, but that's his duel style, he's, he's dedicated to it as an entertainer duelist, all for the sake of his fans and his orphan children, which is honestly pretty cool, I guess. I, honestly though, um, I hope um, it doesn't turn around on him, but with his deck and the monsters he has, I can honestly see why um, he prefer that dueling style. His monsters, the Gouki, which I probably mispronounced, I'm sorry, are all monsters that have effects when they're either in the hand, on the field, plus the additional effect of when they go to the grave art, which all the monsters, I have to guess, say that when they leave the field, you can add another Gonoki card from your deck to your hand. Which is pretty cool, really. And I can see why it would work with, like, Synchros, Xyz, Pendulum, not Pendulums, um, Link monsters, really. Because with Synchros, again, Tuna, Non-Tuna, Send to the Grave, Synchro, get the effect. Xyz, XC material, gone, get the monster effect. Link monsters, tribute, link monster effect, as we saw in the anime with the link monster. Honestly though, with the deck, I honestly um, kind of like it. I wouldn't mind running a deck like that, but I'll probably wait a bit before making a deck, so that way we've got a wide variety of monsters to pick from to make a good deck. But the one thing that was shocking though throughout the entire episode was what he got from Soltek really we f after his training we saw him go to Soltek saying can you give me a hand basically help me defeat player maker and of course Soltek delivered they gave him a um, digital costume I'm gonna say of the Knight of Hull and made it so that it would drag in player maker to duel him and of course, once it was revealed that it was actually all Nizuku, Soltek devised this program, cage sort of situation, and trapped player making Soltek, making it so the only way that Onizu that he can escape is by beating Onizuku. Which um Wow. <laughs> I honestly did not expect that much from Soltek. I knew um brains came from Soltek, but still, they're that determined to unmask player maker. It's honestly pretty shocking, really. I'm pretty sure there are millions of other ways, really. I mean, I mean, us gamers usually have to give out out our details, so surely they couldn't look up the player maker character and see who on earth this, this person is. Unless um, he was like who did a naughty and false identity to himself, which will probably explain a lot of things. But still. Just to see Onizuko like that, his dueling style and all of that, I'm interested to see how this duel will turn out, really. The next episode is all focusing on the clash of the new Link monsters. And the one question I really got about that is, where did Onizuko get his Link monster? That, that just honestly goes my, got in my head, sorry guys. Where did Onizuko get that Link monster? Does Soltek have the power now to create Link monsters? All because Player Maker got his hands on Link Monsters, they made a digital copy of it and then made their own Link Monsters. Or did Onizuku, at, while he was riding the Day of Storm, put his hand in the storm and got out a card? I don't know. I'm interested to see how on earth that Link Monster came out. Hopefully during episode 5 or 6, probably 6, since 5 will probably on the, be on the second half of the duel. We'll learn how on earth that Link Monster came to be because they can't just like give random duelists Link Monsters without explanations really. Who knows, maybe when Blue Angel 
we'll get a turn in the dueling we'll, and see properly how she got Lincoln Monster. Did Soul Tech provide it or did she decide to jump into the day storm and got a card out? The, these are all questions that are still roaming around their heads and since Onisa Crew just brought out this Lincoln Monster out of nowhere, I'm pretty sure we all were shocked really because we'll, we'll, I bet we're all probably some, expecting something big like um jumping like he put his hand through the data storm and got it. He used a similar effect to not sorry not effect, sorry, skill. I really gotta try and remember. He used a similar skill as Playmaker to get out a, a link card. They really need to um think about it really. Hopefully though the story as we go along through things will explain themselves and really show us where this new link monster came from and is it um, how much wallop does it pack really because honestly I'm rooting for player maker and we all know that player maker is going to win this duel really it's player maker but hopefully um, they will um, give us an exciting duel and give us something to really look forward to overall guys though Throughout this entire episode, from beginning to end, I honestly gotta say I enjoyed it. They did take a new turn with the episode, with introducing Onizuka and how um, we got to know him as a character. I give this one five cards, really, just because of the new turn, uh, how we got introduced to the character, and the beginning of the duel, and what we learn about this duelist for it all. It is honestly incredible. I do love this character so much. And honestly, I hope that the way this character will play out and how we see him grow will be such will be really incredible. But I hope this character though does n not gain too much um, character development because we see him have a, have a good heart. We see him um, dueling for the orphans. Really, who knows? Maybe um, we'll get some development. Where he doesn't become egotistical, like he has to become number one. Really, um, who knows? I have a feeling that might happen, but hopefully it won't go into it too quickly. Really, because he still, the kids still look up to him. It's probably just a fate for the kids, really. Um, but they're just kids. Uh, what? Because they're looking up to a player maker. I, I mean, let's face it. The real reason why Onizuku is going out to player maker is because of the um kids and um, them just looking up to the new hero but then again I probably won't blame him but still the kids they can't help it but yeah honestly guys so the episode overall incredible and hopefully um, they do keep it up hopefully episode 5 will give us an incredible moment who knows maybe it will be like half the episode will be declared to the duel or maybe um, two thirds of the episode will be declared to the duel and then we get like a nice wrap up sort of thing with Golden Ezekiel and Player Maker. I'm hoping it will be like the two thirds situation and that will be um, a nice way to wrap it up really and then we can slowly get introduced to Blue Angel which I have a feeling will be the next character to get introduced to and they have to introduce her in a big way because she's after all the main female protagonist she saved Player Maker's life and um, let's face it, we all want to know if the rumours are true about this character, if there's any rumours at all. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway guys, yeah, I'm going to leave it at there. I'm going to go uh, do something that I actually don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> this is the first I usually have to, I usually say what I'm going to do and I don't know. I'm probably... Think of something. I'm gonna go play some games. So until the next time, guys, this is me signing out. Bye bye bye.